Welcome to this sample audio clip, which comes from the series entitled Multi-Hole Conversations with Jim Brown. In this segment, Jim talks about why he thinks multi-hulls are the ideal type of craft for hydrofoils, along with thoughts on the interaction of hydrofoil boats with marine life, and a sailing experience he had with the underwater noise produced by Navy submarines. You can find out more about this historic audio series at www.outrigmedia.com. So do you see the multi-hull as uh, an ideal marriage with, when you're talking about the hydrofoil concept, uh, multi-hull? The sailing hydrofoil, yeah. The sailing yeah. hydrofoil, I think, pretty much has to be a multi-hull. It, it might not be a multi-hull that we would recognize as such. You know, it might just have a big boom sticking out on the side with the hydrofoil on it. No hulls at all. It may come to that. But mm -hmm. at the at the present time, uh, we're we're stuck with having hulls out there because we also have to operate as a surface vessel. Right. <clears throat> exactly. A and uh, and uh, it might be that we will never, the human beings will never fully conquer the sea. Uh, I keep going back to this business of uh, Buckminster Fuller saying that he thought that uh, the sea was a greater challenge than space. Because uh, uh, in, in in space you're only dealing with one medium, you know, and it's a vacuum. You're operating in a vacuum. That that's not too hard to handle if you can get yourself in a pressurized thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, boats now, surface vessels. Geez, when you think about it, <laughs> water is somewhere between six and nine hundred times heavier than air mm. and we're trying to design a vehicle that will operate in both at once and indeed clean its motive power from the relative movement of one fluid across its interface with the other yeah you know that's yeah. a pretty lofty concept sailing right. is out there man <laughs> you know that's all sailboats have to do that Right, and right. Uh, that's why uh, why I think uh, God never created a, a sailing creature. Uh, we right. just uh, we we don't have an animal that can operate like that. Right, and uh, he left that up to man. You know, are there any concerns that you have with regards to the use of hydrofoils on sailboats? Um, as it relates to. Um, you know, possible danger. Uh, there's a lot of things floating in around, around in the ocean that shouldn't be floating around, and there's there's natural obstacles as well. I mean, you think about uh, you know marine life and and cutting through the water on a on a sailboat that's really flying yeah. on uh, on some foils and then hitting uh, or coming into contact with that marine life. Is there, are there any concerns that you have with regards to that? Well, so far, the main hazard has proved to be shallow water. You can run them into the bottom, you know. They don't uh -huh. like that. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> the boat comes down quick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and so uh, this is not exactly a shoal draft uh, configuration, but, you know, the big freighters, the real load carriers, my gosh, they need 50 feet of water to get through anyway. Right. And uh, <clears throat> so shipping channels are pretty much uh, uh, free of of, of shoals. Um, that's not true everywhere. There are places where you know with the, the the hydrofoil or the flying ship of the future is going to have to come down and operate as a surface vessel, just like any other mono hull or multi hull. Mm -hmm. But it have to retract its foil. Okay. And at that point, it would have far less draft than something like a tanker or um and so um it it could definitely get, uh, a flying ship could definitely get into Prince William Sound you know if they can get the Valdez out 
<laughs> right. But, of course, yeah. they did run aground, you know. So shallow water is a hazard for foils and everything else. And then with regard to uh, obstacles, uh, oh, there's there's no doubt, boy, um, there's a lot of junk floating around in the ocean these days. Yeah. Um, uh, and and marine life. But uh, we also have the, so, the so-called side-scanning radar. And... Um, <clears throat> Even the airways have uh, shipping routes. You know there are there are definite routes in the sky that uh, most commercial airplanes follow uh, in order that the ground stations can keep track of their whereabouts. Yeah. And um, and in those so-called let's call them shipping lanes, uh, it should be possible to keep them clear of of obstacles even whales um i don't know you know we didn't get a chance to go sailing in scrimshaw the other day but uh, did did you know that uh, that my old 40 year old trimaran has an underwater whale whistle no i did not know that <laughs> yeah wow yeah. Uh, whales are uh, very very sensitive to uh, very low frequency sounds uh-huh and uh, and dolphins also a uh, fish too of course uh, fish have the so-called lateral line system down their sides which is essentially a row of ears <laughs> that gives them tremendous parallax that is they can tell the direction from from which sound is coming very well and uh, uh, uh most uh seagoing mammals uh have extremely acute hearing mhm mm-hmm. and uh, it, it's in fact it's said that the great blue whales can pass messages among one so among themselves around the world. Wow. <clears throat> so wow. Uh, um, I I think that it will be possible to to uh, warn marine life to some extent. It will also be possible to identify them and uh, avoid them to a large extent, but there are bound to be accidents, just like we run into elk on the highway. Right, right, sure. Yeah, I've seen some uh, shows on television that seem to indicate that many uh, marine life are able to pick up uh, in ways that, of course, human beings will never be able to uh, what's going on in the environment around them, and then get out of danger before the danger is even in you know physically near them. Yeah. So that uh-huh. that probably but, plays into this conversation too. Yeah, yeah. I I think they'll 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 learn. Uh, they've been assault. Uh, underwater creatures have been assaulted with such heinous noises in the name of uh, defense and uh, national security with these uh, huge sound pulses that are put out by submarines and also uh, by uh, seismic exploration for oil and gas, mm-hmm. huge explosions that have been put they've put off, you know, routinely underwater. Now they're using compressed air. They've, they've gone a long way with it. But, but still, man, the racket that comes out of a nuclear submarine when it's coming into the harbor, I mean, I've... <laughs> I've had the experience of having one pass underneath Scrimshaw. Really? It's like, yeah, and it's like really turning up the volume and uh, on your stereo to the point where it's hurting your ears. And, wow. And uh, you hear this thing coming right through the hull. You know, it gets louder the deeper into the boat you go. You get your head down into the bilge, and there's no doubt you can hear this thing that it sounds like ping, wow, 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 wow. Wow, and it goes off about every ten seconds, you know. How about and, that? Now, when did when did this happen? Um, the most profound experience I've had with it was uh, uh, in Southern California when um, we were uh, uh, sailing out to uh, to uh, Anacapa Island with some some friends on board, and uh, we, we were actually coming back, and uh, I kept hearing this. This sound, it was very faint at the time, this ping thing that I thought sounded like a chirp at first, and I thought we might have a bird on board. You know, we often have land birds 
land on our boats uh, if they get uh, blown off of the land. They'll uh-huh. land on board and they'll stick around. Some of them stick around for a long time. How about that? Yeah, it's really something. Hey, we got a bird. <laughs> <laughs> Here's this little chickadee sitting on the lifelines and you can't see land, you know. <laughs> yeah, how'd that bird get there? <laughs> but um, uh, I thought we might have a bird on board, but it kept getting louder and louder and louder. And finally it was like, holy mackerel, it was horrific. And uh, it sounded to me like it passed right under us, uh, uh, headed for uh, San Pedro. There's a big sub base there. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Amazing. Yeah, and um, off of uh, off of Big Sur, where where we lived uh, b- b- back in the in the early '60s, uh, and in many other places uh, around the country, they have uh, a, a very top security zone with. Uh, Huge strings of either microphones or, or uh, uh, you know, for sound pickup or um, other devices for generating sound that can be picked up by other microphones elsewhere and stuff. It's like underwater lighthouses. Thanks for listening. We invite you to find out all about the complete audios in this series by visiting us on the web at www.outrigmedia.com.